Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Retaliation number 63. And what the hell is going on backstage? That's DJ Kraft and Titan. Is, is Titan on a retaliation now? Well, he's trying to pick a fight with Kraft and... He and Kraft are squaring off and I don't know what's going on. Kraft just stomping away on Titan. I know there's a few more names yet to be revealed in the shakeup and what a hell of a way for Titan to make his retaliation debut here. Going after DJ Kraft and wait, what? I, I don't understand. I'm being told that Titan is going after DJ Kraft courtesy of Andre Baker. What? Baker obviously had the the meetup with Kraft last week. Baker Cutting a scathing promo to the audience, only to be answered by former stablemate DJ Kraft, who said, you're going to earn some respect, because this isn't what we taught you at Fitzwell Fighting Systems. And what is he getting in return? He gets uh, Andre Baker's hired heavy going after him. Kraft and Titan going back and forth here. I don't know how or why Titan would even accept this but oh my god Titan just throwing DJ Kraft into that laundry shooting a big suplex to the to the concrete floor Titan hell of a way to make yourself known that's for sure but what did Andre Baker do to get Titan on his side I don't know, but Titan reverse choke slam on DJ Kraft. Splat on the floor. But Titan's not done. He's looking. To, oh my God! He's looking to weaken Kraft before Inferno for Andre Baker. And the big man just wailing away on the king. This is a uh, not how I expected. Oh no. Kraft bouncing off that electrical box there. This is not how I expected retaliation to start here at the Videotron Center in Quebec City. And Titan now, I mean, it started out with Kraft just kind of stomping away at Titan just to brush him aside, but Titan obviously has an agenda courtesy of the big effing deal going after a man that Baker once saw as his mentor and Titan bouncing off the electrical box now Kraft oh no is, is he thinking about doing it come on Kraft I know he blindsides you but think better come on oh no he might have thought too long as Titan has control of Kraft once again sending him down the hallway Kraft trying to fight off the big man. And oh, send it to that room. Rods. I guess that's French Canadian for retaliation. I don't know why it's in red though. But Titan, big atomic drop. And oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh my god, reverse choke slap through the table. Reverse choke slap through the table, Titan. Going all out here against the former World Revolution and former Intercontinental Champion. Now the big man stopping away on Kraft. I don't blame anyone not trying to break this up, but holy crap, guys. These two have been wailing on each other for about five minutes now. To... I showed not officially begun yet. Kraft sweeps the leg. Oh, Titan, looking for something, but he's a lariat instead, but Kraft kips right back up, only for Titan to catch him and throw him to the outside.
Oh, I thought Ty was going to grab that chair there for a second. Make matters worse. Now Titan, uh oh, he's got crap set up. Titan Fall connects. And here comes the security from around the corner. Titan apparently doing the bidding of Andre Baker going after his next opponent. Good grief. And hold on, I'm hearing uh, something in my headset. And tonight, Baker, while well, he was scheduled to face a uh, roster shakeup member, one of the last ones, but he will have Titan in his corner for that match. I guess the partnership is official now. But now coming up next, one half of your World Tag Team Championship match for Inferno. One half of the Blaze Runners, Eric Libby takes on one half of the Clown Dynasty, Marks Dementio coming up next. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is scheduled for one fall. From Worcester, Massachusetts, Mr. High Life, Eric Libby. And Eric Libby running down to the ring, possibly trying to chase that dragon you just cannot catch, depending on how high this man is tonight in Quebec City. But Libby, once again, one half of the tag team champions, Last season, it was he and his brother, Sean Libby. Now, it is with his smoking buddy, Brandon Deaver, who will be in action later tonight against the other half of this team. But here comes one half of the Clown Dynasty, the unlikely number one contenders for the titles. <laughs> From the reverse dimension, weighing zero, zero, two pounds, Twisted Mark Dementio. And Dementio and the Clown Dynasty. Very good season three for them. Embroiled in a gigantic rivalry with One Night Stand and Team Fuck Your Mass. Ultimately ending in a TLC match. And it was the Clown Dynasty coming down with a briefcase. We didn't know what was inside it at the time, but after. Beach Brawl and the shakeup mostly settled. It was revealed that inside the briefcase, a shot at the Tag Team Championships. And Inferno is retaliation shot, so the Clown Dynasty getting their chance at the tag titles at Inferno. The duo looking to make their pay-per-view debuts, believe it or not. Skelton, been here since season one. Finally getting that opportunity to shine on the big stage. But looking to take care of business here tonight is his partner, Mark Stamencio against Eric Libby. And later tonight we will have the other matchup. Brandon Deaver, the other half of the Tag Team Champions, will take on Skelton Stanzik. The other half of the Clown Dynasty will see if the Clown success can continue here in Season 3. They've been rolling. They got some big wins. Can it translate into potentially one of the unlikeliest championship wins in RWR history? Well, so far, Mark's looking all right against Eric Libby. Nice takedown there. But gets arm dragged down. And the two meeting at a stalemate. Also tonight, like I said, you have that inverse singles match between champion and challenger for the tag team championships. Also tonight, women's tag team action. We have regular tag team action. Dallas Carino and Ellie Richardson taking on the team of Catherine Isogen and Rosie Rebel. And like I said earlier, the aforementioned Baker taking on the latest roster shakeup member and I'm believed 
at least I'm being told here that it'll be the last of the reveals. Although, I mean, I don't know if anyone expected Titan to debut the way he did, but nonetheless. Also tonight, Mike Burke, homecoming for him of sorts. He goes one-on-one -on -one with Adam Sean. From what I've heard, he may not be completely recovered from snapping at Beach Brawl, which may spell doom for the new leader of Hydra. And in our main event, women's six-woman tag team action. The Rogers Foundation, Hope, Faith, and Lily Thatcher will take on the team of Azami K. Sato, the number one contender for the women's title, Torvi, Miss Golden Ticket, and the new RWR women's champion, Apathy, in our main event here tonight. But right now, back into the ring we go, and... Mark Stemencio has Eric Levy up on his shoulders, giving him a nice airplane spin throughout the province of Quebec. And we're going to go the other way. Wee! Round and round we go. Where he'll stop, nobody knows. And just tosses him off like he's nothing. Mark's trying to recalibrate his equilibrium. The cover one, two, and no. Eric Libby able to escape caught off guard there by that airplane spin I would think who knows how dizzy this man still is but either way Dementia going to take advantage here of course the Clown Dynasty boys not too much in the singles action they both competed in triple threat, match or triple threat matches earlier this season to varying successes, but as far as I know, their first straight up one-on-one -on -one matches here in season three. Quick roll up from Eric Libby and only a one count on Dementio. And now, Eric Libby, elbow, kick, elbow, sends Dementio into the ropes in a big backhand chop. And oh, cartwheel knees. Flashy and effective, Libby to the top rope now. What's he looking to do here? He's standing up to Mencho. And, oh, looking for a flying forearm. Dementia moved out of the way. And now the clown back in control jerks Libby off the ropes. And what is he going to be looking to do here? Oh, he's going to grab him by the arms. going to choke Libby out with his own arms. Twisted, you heard in his ring announcement, certainly showing that here with this move. Wrenching on Libby's neck with his own arms. It's about as twisted as you can get, but Libby able to fight out. And flips for effect. But Dementio gets him back on his shoulder, slams him down and wrenches on the arm and the leg at the same time. And now Dementio picks Libby up, pump handle slam in the center of the ring. Is that gonna be all she wrote the cover? One, two, it is! Big win for one half of the no more contenders here tonight. Big win for Dementio. The winner of this match, Mark Dementio. Well, I've been talking about the unlikely Cinderella story of this team reaching no more contenderships, but maybe you shouldn't be so surprised. Maybe this team is for real, folks, because Dementio, a clean and decisive victory over one half of the tag team champions, and if Skelton can match this feat later tonight, Runners might be in trouble come Inferno. A short and sweet reign with the belts could be in their future. But now coming up next, women's tag team action. The team of Dallas Carino and Ellie Richardson take on Catherine Isogen. And Rosie Rebel, this will be held under retaliation rules, and it's coming up next.
The following contest is a tag team match. On our way to the RWR Arena, Dallas Carino. And Carino, she's been mixed up with Rosie Rebel this past few weeks. Or not even a few weeks, past couple of months, pardon me. And here they go crossing paths once again in this tag team match. And for the most part, Carino has gotten the upper hand on Rosie, but Rosie's got a very capable partner on her side here tonight. That could help her shift the tide. But on the same hand, Carino hoping to be that same catalyst for her partner coming out right now. From Windsor, Ontario, Canada, Ellie Richardson. So at least the home country native, Windsor, a little bit out of the way of Quebec, but nonetheless, the Canadian native making her way to the ring here. And two weeks ago, she was shaken up to retaliation, but lost in a good effort, but fell to Catherine Isogen. In a card that saw all the shakeup members end up losing, so not a not a good bout for any of the shakeups, not just Ellie, but obviously looking to pick up some sort of revenge here against Isogen here tonight in this tag team match with some help from the uh, focused Alice Carino, who's had her way with from Japan, this is Catherine Isogen. And here comes Isogen. Like I said, she beat Ellie two weeks ago in her shakeup retaliation debut, but Isogen was only the second person this season to pin Torvi, but paid for it at Beach for all being the first one eliminated in the triple threat match, ultimately won by Torvi against herself and Adeline Ward. Here comes her partner. Coming down the ring in her Harley Davidson brother, Rosie Rebel. Room, room, here comes the motorcycle mama, but as tough and bad as she looks on the bike, she's had her struggles with Dallas Carino. And like I said, just hoping with the assistance of Isogen to turn the tide here tonight. That remains to be seen, but Rosie, Looking to get back in the win column here tonight and kind of get back into the swing of things. Very quiet season three for her, but tried picking on the new girl and hasn't really worked out as of yet. But here we go, Karina Richardson, Rebel and Isogen. Let's get it on and as expected, Carino and Rebel pair off. Richardson and Isogen pair off. And of course, at this rate, you know, you got to think these women trying to fight for at least a slot into uh, Supernova, possibly getting a shot at the champion, whether it be Apathy or Azami K. Sato. Or if plans, if it goes according to plan, as you heard a couple weeks ago, potentially Torby could be the champion by then, which, you know, just spells doom for everyone, I would say. But also with that, I mean, 
You have Ellie Richardson here, you have Lily Thatcher here, who's in tonight's main event with the Rogers Foundation. But on top of that, you got the Agents of Pain here in Retaliation now. Goddess Dawn, who her and Olivia Taylor got into a little bit of a Twitter spat earlier this week. A lot of uh, Dallas eliminated from the Rumble there. A lot of uh, no love lost, at least from Olivia's end, from that Court of Darkness red merger from season one. And looking to take it out on Goddess Dawn and her Sky Dojo graduates. And we saw Olivia defeat Roxy Riot a couple weeks ago, very game Roxy Riot in a very competitive match. And we didn't see her, but Paige also here on the brand. And of course with these women too, also coming up is Phoenix Cup next month if they're not not in the title picture by then, a win in the Phoenix Cup grants them any match they want at Supernova. Could be a title match, like season one. The ultimate winner, Kimiko Matsui, ended up getting a title match two count from Rebel on Carino. But season two, Hope Rogers, she forewent the title match, went after Haley Shepard instead, her former tag team partner, and who turn, turn coat her, turn coated her. There we go. Nice slam there for Rebel. Quick cover. Is she going to get her? One, two, and no. Two count only. Is Isogen taking it to Richardson as well? But Pope, I mean, the title match obviously is the popular choice that has been the choice for both men's cup winners thus far. Norns. One in season one, cashed in on an unsuccessful World Heavyweight Championship shot. And season two, ultimately won by Gil Thunderstrike, who successfully used it to win the World Revolution title. At Supernova, modified juice box, the butterfly effect is what she calls it. On Ellie Richardson, broken up by Carino. And she eats a dropkick for her troubles. Isogen standing tall in the ring. It looks like they're going to trade partners as Isogen going after Carino's arm and wrenches it back. Now, Rosie trying to go after Ellie Richardson now. So, you got to think with these ladies, they're not on the Inferno card. They got to think just any win gets them some momentum heading into the Phoenix Cup where it's a 24 women tournament there's 12 from this brand 12 from the other brand same with the men and you got to get through not one not two not three but four rounds to win the cup including at least two through your whole through your brand and then round three there's two brand matches and the one brand versus brand match leading up to the cup final which will be held next month but heading into Inferno big double stomp there Ellie Richardson cartwheel Pele connects now Isogen and Richardson going after their respected opponents here And Isogen sizing up Carino. Hits it with the butterfly effect again. Richardson dumped from the ring to cover. One, two, and no. Carino able to kick out, but barely saving the match for her and Richardson. And now Isogen kicking away. Oh, big kick to the head of Carino. Rebel going to the top row. Big swan dive to Ellie Richardson. Oh, Carino kipping up and gets thrown out of the ring for her troubles. Rebel, nice slam there on Ellie Richardson. Sizing her up now as Isogen and Carino to the outside for the double damage points. Big 
follow a slam there from Rebel. Can she pick up the upset? The cover one, two, and no. Carino able to get into the ring and break it up. And eats a backbreaker for her troubles. Now the team of Isogen and Rebel standing tall now. Isogen heading the top rope. Is she gonna go for the double foot stomp? She does across the gut of Richardson. But Ellie able to fight out. Belly to belly suplex from Rebel to Carino. On the opposite side, DDT there connects from Ellie on Isogen. And stiff shot on Catherine Isogen. Ellie Richardson. Paracarana takes her down. And Carino no staggers back. Just chaotic action here in this match. Couple of close calls. Oh God, Isogen and Carino both thrown out of the ring. Richardson basement drop kick onto Isogen and Rosie Rebel. Just kind of collecting her thoughts on the opposite side of the ring. Maybe giving Carino a little too much time to recover. Meanwhile, oh, Isogen wanted to go right back outside for the double damage points. All right. All four ladies going to take it to the outside now. This is power retaliation. Tag matches go as you see there's no count outs. None of that crap. Do what you want, but you got to make the the pinfall or submission inside the ring. Now Carino standing tall over Rebel, trying to make her case for an, the RWR awards also coming up at the end of the season. I mean, Supernova's in two months, then you got the awards. Carino looking to possibly take home a Newcomer of the Year award. Nice suplex there from Rebel though. Newcomer of the Year Award, a little bit of a lighter field than usual. So hoping she can try to take it with that butterfly effect again from Isogen on Ellie. The cover, one, two, and no. Ellie still kicks out. Isogen just cannot put anyone away here tonight. So Ellie on the apron. Isogen thinks she tagged her own partner just to get a shot at Carino to try to put this match away. Putting her ego ahead of everything else. Another butterfly effect on Dallas Carino. The cover one. No. It looks like Ellie was able to break it up. Eats a two count of her own from Rebel. Richardson just able to break up that pinball belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Nice from Rosie Rebel. Good showing for her in this matchup. And, oh, Weedy T from Richardson. Now, Isogen. Michinoku driver connects on Carino, but Ali Applecore connects on Rebel, but Rebel had the ropes. Good thing is Isogen in the middle of an arm drag on Dallas Carino. But man, I mean, how much more punishment can they take? Another diving foot stomp on Carino. How much more punishment can these two take? Cover from Rebel, one, two, and no. Isogen celebrating a little too early. She probably thought that was it. I mean, I thought that was it, but... No three. And now Rebel sizing up. Carino, no. Broken up by Richardson. Isogen to the ground. Rebel eliminated from the rumble. Leaving Richardson. Leaving Isogen on their own. Cartwheel. Pele connects. Can Ellie extract her revenge and put away Isogen? Rebel thrown into the steps. She's not a factor. One, two, and no. Isogen's still able to kick out a two. Might have been this team's best shot of any. But Richardson standing up. Isogen again. Hits it with the forearm. 
Apple Core connects. Cover one, two. She got her. Richardson with the revenge and her and Carino pick up the win. The winners of the match, the team of Ellie Richardson and Dallas Carino. Hell of an effort from Isogen and Rebel. They had control for the most of the match, but in the end, one misstep gives Richardson the edge over Isogen with the defensive assist from Carino and Rebel. And they are your winners here tonight. A little bit of a better showing for Ellie Richardson in her second retaliation match. I'm sure that that's good for her, especially with how her uh, husband has been. Maybe she can rub off some of that good luck on him in the near future. But coming up next, second half of Tag Team Champion versus Tag Team Challenger, Brandon Deaver takes on Skelton Stanzik. Coming up next. Making his way to the ring. He is one half of the RWR Tag Team Champions, Brandon Deaver. And Deaver holding his first championship in RWR, one half of the Tag Team Champions, Eric Lippy. They seem to run into some sort of a buzzsaw against the Clown Dynasty, at least. Eric Libby has earlier tonight. Deaver hoping to buck the trend here. We'll see how high he will get here tonight and what his paint threshold will be. You know, he's notorious for getting super high before a match so he can absorb just egregious amounts of pain. But he'll take on a seasoned vet finally getting his first crack at the spotlight at Skelton Stancic. From the Clown Room, representing the Clown Dynasty, this is the real clown, Skelton Stanzik. And Stanzik, he is a season one veteran, was embroiled in the now defunct television championship division. Almost got a crack at the belt, but ultimately fell short. Not going to matter because the TV title was defended on TV, not pay-per-view. But regardless, Stanzik, Getting his first title shot, his first pay-per-view appearance, and looking to make the best of it and follow in the successful footsteps of his partner, Mark Stemencio, earlier tonight. Here we go, Deaver, Stanzik. Let's go, the other half of this championship match preview. Deaver, nice soul kick there, and neckbreaker takes down Stanzik. And I mean, I mentioned the Clown Dynasty's rise to this position in the previous match, but Skelton certainly did his part of the heavy lifting. And those aforementioned triple threat matches, it was Skelton that I believe picked up the win in his match. Markston not, so Skelton obviously with the experience factor as well on the team. Like I said, he's been around since season one, so he kind of knows how things work. But anybody, including a man so high, he cannot tell you what his name is, can do a Russian leg sweep. Half the time, I wonder if he even knows he's one half of the tag team champions. But then again, I wonder if he hasn't somehow hasn't tried to make a bong out of the damn belt either, if that's even possible. I don't know, but 
Otherwise, lifestyle choices of the Blaze Runners aside, it's equaling success in the ring. As your current tag team champions, they defeated the totally legitimate business and recoil at Beach Brawl. Recoil does have a defense or a rematch under the belt from a defense of Resurgence 100, so I think it would be safe to assume that the winner of this match would take on Recoil at or around Phoenix Cup, but at this point, view the Blaze Runners cannot look ahead, especially with the team on quite the roll like the Clown Dynasty is because one slip up and they're going to be your new champions and they could be the ones heading into Supernova as the belts while you're ultimately sitting at home. So either way, Deaver and Libby their first taste as champions, not a good one, not a good strand, but hoping it'll give them a nice high at the end of it in retaining the Tag Team Championships against the Clown Dynasty with Skelton. Nice clothesline from behind on Brandon Deaver. And it's the Clown Dynasty again, getting the one up on the champions. I don't know if that spells what will happen at Inferno, which of course will happen in two weeks time on July the 31st from Atlanta, Georgia, or as they like to call it, Hotlanta, Georgia, very fitting for an Inferno pay-per-view to take place. Also former home of the Atlanta Flames. We move to Calgary, but nonetheless, Skelton Stanzig, nice slam there. On Brandon Deaver looking for the cover. One, two, and no, two count only. And for Brandon Deaver, I'm not sure he even remembers, but uh, it was last year's Supernova. He took his shot at then United States champion Chris Jones in an unsuccessful effort. But hoping that this year's Supernova is a little different, hoping he can walk in and walk out with some sort of championship gold. But a sliding D connects from Skelton. The cover, one, two, no. Very close to 2.9 for you people playing at home. And Deaver in a lot of trouble here. Skelton just going. Balls to the wall here tonight. The Clown Dynasty making themselves known. But Deaver off the ropes and a nice flipping neck breaker connects. Now Deaver hoping his Taco Bell powers can work here. Eight second ride connects. Move gifted to him from DSM-5 member Adam Shaw. Can it work here? The cover one, two, and no. Two count only. Deaver a little confused. He thought he had him. He did not, though. But, oh, nice clothesline there, and another clothesline. Off the ropes, and a dropkick connects, hoping to keep the championship gold under the DSM-5 banner alongside their leader and women's champion, Apathy. Another flipping neckbreaker connects. Of course, we'll see more DSM-5 action tonight. Adam Shaw, the man who gave Brandon D for the eight-second ride, will take on Hydra member and home province boy, Mike Burke. I know the Quebec City people they not too big not too big of a fan of the montreal residents but maybe they'll cheer their home province lad here tonight in whatever version of adam shaw we see i don't even know at this point as skeleton marching to the side of the ring another sliding d connects on to Deaver hoping to slide that D right off his name and make him Brandon Eaver. The cover one, two. That's it. He got it. Skelton Stanzik. Clean sweep for the Clown Dynasty here tonight on the Tag Team Champions. 
The winner of the match, Skeleton Stenzik. And Skeleton gets the job done. And like I said, do not sleep on this Clown Dynasty team. They have been red hot here in season three. And they both have singles victories over the tag team champions heading into Inferno. They cannot take their opponents lightly because we will see new tag team champions if that is the case. Blaze Runners need to do a little less smoking, a little more playbooking if they want to keep a hold of their tag team championships for the future. But for now, Blaze Runners in trouble. Clown Dynasty rolling into Inferno. And now coming up next. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Well, I had a sneaking suspicion on who that final roster shakeup member was going to be, but uh, it is official, and that certainly helps DJ Craft. Look, he's in his corner, too. Former Fitzwell Fighting System boys, Buzz, on retaliation, about to make his debut to an unsuspecting Andre Baker, but he will have his new heavy backup in his corner. Chase my dreams. I won't regret when the sun sets. Cause I live my life like I'm a beast. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring at this time, the RWR golden ticket holder, the big effing beast, Andre Baker. Mr. Golden Ticket, Andre Baker. Fell short against Donovan Payne at Beach Brawl, but certainly looked good during the match. Came out the following week, well, two weeks, pardon me, claiming Donovan Payne's win was a fluke. He controlled that match, and he was mopping him up and down the Meadowlands. And that he was going to prove that the loss was a fluke and called out literally anyone and it was ultimately answered by the newest retaliation member DJ Kraft who made us down to the ring trying to talk some sense into a man that formerly looked up to him as a mentor but to no avail and the two briefly brawling before being separated looks like I come to the ring by DJ Kraft from Dallas, Texas. This is Big Bad Buzz. And it looks like Kraft got the reinforcements he needed. And so did Baker. I mean, he got his reinforcements as well. I mean, he wants to claim that he's a, he's a capable champion. But here he is with, in, with some backup. Tells you how he feels about Kraft. I mean, if anyone knows how deadly Kraft can be, it's a former stable member, especially someone that looked up to Kraft during his time in the stable. But that's all thrown out the window now. Baker, not trying to earn some respect, but trying to force some respect into his name by taking on DJ Kraft in Inferno. But he's going to face a huge roadblock here tonight against Big Bad Buzz. We haven't seen him in over a month since Resurgence 100 fell to BDT in a KDF rules match. Only the second man to defeat Buzz in a KDF rules match. Although it wasn't an official one because there was no cage, but that was ultimately requested by Buzz because of BDT's debut attacking Buzz from behind on the outside. Buzz said, I don't need no cage. I'm beating this man's ass all over the arena. And he ultimately failed. But Buzz, he's rejuvenated and more pissed off than ever, especially since it looks like Jarek was able to bring both members to retaliation. And Buzz just biding his time. I think the two knew that the next target was their former stablemate, Andre Baker, the 
Crouch was always going to answer any call that Baker made, and Baker trying to chop down the monster that is Buzz. He's basically just shaking him off at this point. And oh god, just picks him up like he's nothing. Big power slam. And we'll see how much of a factor Titan is in this match. Because Buzz and Titan certainly have a decent history with each other on resurgence. But nothing on this level. I mean, like I said, Baker, Buzz, and Kraft, former stable mates. And... Craft coming out to teach the kid a little bit about respect and how to earn it. And Baker wants no part of that. He's just trying to work his way up and prove to himself that he can hang with the best of the best until he ultimately cashes in his golden ticket briefcase. At some point in time, I mean, he's still got some time. He's got until <clears throat> March of next year. Next year, sky's the limit. So he's got he's got time, but the clock is ticking on him. Just like Miss Golden Ticket Tori, although it seems like she's making her intentions a little more known than Baker is at this point in time. But... Baker needs to worry a little less about the case and worry about Buzz as he brain buster to the ground. And here's Titan. Here's the equalizer that Baker brought to his side. Kraft, he's still recovering a little bit from that assault from Titan to open up tonight's show. I mean, good thing he wasn't in action tonight, but Buzz certainly doing the heavy lifting for him. Big military press slam, sending Baker to the ground. And a normally cocky, normally confident Baker just cannot get out of the starting blocks in this match. And I don't think he expected Buzz to be the one to answer the call. And especially an associate of DJ Kraft in his corner. Screwdriver connects. Here's Titan on the apron. Again, the cover, but the referee distracted by Titan, certainly doing his job thus far. I don't know if Baker would have kicked out of that screwdriver, but Titan certainly keeping his new client in this match. Baker and Titan, they certainly had a history with each other, Baker defeating Titan for the TV title back in season one. But it looks like they're on the same page now. At least for now. Buzz sends Baker to the outside. He needs to be careful because, like I said, that big blue monster right there behind the purple steps. But, oh God, oh no. Oh no, power bombed. Oh God, it swung into the apron. The hardest part of that ring. Baker trying to find some sort of an opening, but to no avail. It's been all buzz in this matchup. Oh my God, just chucking him aside like he's nothing. And the two men back into the ring. Oh my God, a shoot headbutt from Buzz. You think Kraft is pissed off in Baker's words? How about a man that's been faithful to FFS this entire time and Buzz certainly venting some frustrations out on someone who clearly did not take the training seriously. Baker wailing on Buzz trying to get some sort of an opening. Titan still an equalizer in this match, not letting Buzz finish this one off. Baker going to do some posing and spears Buzz off the apron. Now what is Baker going to do? He's just going to stand in the ring and let Buzz wallow on the ground. Tightened. Eyes set on Buzz. Buzz right back into the ring. And oh god, a big elbow to Baker. And he's setting him up. Titan just threw in a chair. But Baker gets hit with the screwdriver. Buzz. Going for the cover. One. Two. 
Oh, Titan tried to pull out the referee, but the referee ended up making the three count anyway. Titan, too late on the... The winner of this match, Big Bad Buzz. And Buzz, a very dominating victory from our former stablemate in Andre Baker. And proving why this man is considered one of the scariest men in all of RWR when he wants to. Certainly had a reason for it here tonight. Taking Baker to the gulag and back. Titan did his best to help his client, but ultimately too late on the referee pull. Pulled him out right when the ref hit three. And Buzz, officially your winner here tonight. So the attack from Titan, <laughs> attack from Titan on DJ Kraft backstage to open up the show ends up backfiring on Baker and oh my God, oh no, this man is still on the purge. He has not recovered since Beach Brawl. He has still snapped, and I don't know if the DSM Five has even attempted to try to do anything to help him. Mike Burke might be in trouble in his own province. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is scheduled for one fall. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Shaw. The boy's not quite that orange glow from Beach Pro, but it is the eerie blue glow and Adam Shaw Bridge mode still activated I'm not sure if this was by direction of Apathy the DSM-5 or not but considering he's facing the leader of Hydra, the stable that's been a thorn in their side for the past couple of months. We thought it was all over at Beach Brawl when Adam Shaw just took it upon himself to take it to the stable, but uh, yeah, I don't know because Hydra, like we saw a couple weeks ago, Hydra picking up a fourth member in Danny Storm, Dirk elevating himself and calling out Sean Libby in the process. And Vlad Alucard now teaming with Danny Storm. And it looks like they may have just evened the numbers on the DSM-5. It's DSM-5, so they have four male members. They got the Blaze Runners, they got Sean Levy, and they have Adam Shaw. And now the Hydra. Mike Burke said this promo a couple weeks ago in Mythology. The Hydra, you cut off one head, two more grow in its place. They cut off the head of Mike Metal and grew the heads of Thunder. And Danny Storm and now Hydra, four strong. We'll see if the new leader can pick up a win. It's a very dangerous Adam Shaw, the Purge. Adam Shaw. From Calgary. Alberta, Canada, Mike Burke. Ooh, how about that extra heat for him? For Quebec there, no love loss for his origins. Booking himself from Calgary, dramatic pause. Alberta, Canada. And if any people were on this man's side here tonight, that certainly just went outside the window. And Burke, uh, just disregard that jacket. Burke, not putting the fans on his side against Purge activated. And, well, this man's certainly a very cocky individual. And just piling all the odds against him here in this matchup. We'll see if it works out for him. Bold strategy, Cotton.
and nobody in either man's corners. The purge activated Adam Shaw taking on the self-appointed new leader of Hydra, Mike Burke. Tonight's semi-main event, here we go, Burke. Nice takedown of Adam Shaw. And nice butterfly suplex connecting. Of course, Burke will take on Sean Libby one-on-one -on -one at Inferno. Adam Shaw still trying to get over the thunder hump. And I'm being told he will get one more shot at Thunder. One on one, Adam Shaw hits the deal. Nobody kicks out of the deal. Luckily for Burke, Shaw not going for the pin. But like I said, for Shaw, he'll get one more crack at seemingly his kryptonite Thunder. And from what I'm being told, the winner of that match will qualify for the Phoenix Cup. So we could ultimately see a Phoenix Cup without someone like Adam Shaw, which would be quite strange, but hell of an opportunity for Thunder, who has really broken out on his own since joining Hydra and mutually breaking it off the tag team with Max Height ending the coalition, even though both men are still on the same show, but no more tag team. Of course, Max Height former world heavyweight champion looking to climb back up the ranks thunder looking to get a crack at the icy title at some point but certainly trying to go through adam shaw here and now burke nice arm drag takedown of shaw and the no, nice Nice move there, and Burke taking early control of the match. Burke, oh, he's on the outside. He sees Shaw right back to his feet. Burke frustrated. Shaw just goading his opponent, trying to get inside his head. Burke not trying to allow it, but nice snowplow from Shaw. And, of course, if you saw Beach Brawl in the three-on-three -three match between Hydra, Burke, Vlad, and Thunder, Taking on Sean Libby, uh, Adam Shaw, and Jimmy Kane. Shaw coming out, purge mode activated. You saw, we saw him snap the previous night in his Intercontinental Championship tournament final against Razor Sharp. Ultimately, digging up the old wounds that caused Shaw to snap, and it was Hydra that ended up paying for it at Beach Brawls. Shaw took over that entire match and basically won it on his own which just shows you just how much of a light switch flip purge mode is from the normalized Adam Shaw we've been seeing for the past couple months but the DSM-5 they're trying to figure out how to control this purge obviously for their own help big knee there catching Burke off guard codebreaker out of nowhere connects of course, they've been suppressing the purge mode for quite some time, but it was Shaw himself that ended up snapping and letting it loose. Cover one, two, two count only. But the problem is, the DSM-5 has not yet figured out how to turn it off, but I think they're okay with it staying on, considering it's still against Hydra members. And, oh, Trick or Treat connects out of nowhere, middle of the ring, the cover one, two, no! Shaw cannot believe it. He's going ballistic in the ring. Burke able to kick out a trick or treat at two. But now, stomping on the hand and the fingers of Mike Burke. Escaped a couple of big moves from Shaw. Shaw losing any sort of control and normalcy he had left inside of him. Maybe bad news for Burke. Shaw just completely snapping on him. Oh, no. Oh, God. Burke dropping the pile driver on Shaw. Can Burke steal one here? Can he defeat purge mode? Looking for the double arm DDT. And no, Shaw able to work his way out of it. And now Shaw just kicking away at the 
struggling body of Mike Burke. He almost caught Shaw, but ended up being reversed. And now Burke again in trouble. Not quite the uh, reintroduction into the singles four way for Ray. He quite expected trick or treat again. Connects out of nowhere from Shaw. One, two, no. It's two count. Shaw absolutely livid against the referee. Burke surviving two trick or treats. But oh god, Shaw just dropping the fist from the top rope. If anything. Just pissing off Shaw more and more, which spells more and more doom for Burke by not ultimately ending the match early. But Burke defiant again, looking for the DDT, but Shaw able to break out of it yet again. Burke just cannot plant Shaw. Instead, Adam Shaw perches Burke on the top rope. Oh, I think he's looking for that. Oh no! Ends up kicking Burke. Gets the Brett's rope assisted code breaker. Burke busted open. Cover one, two, three, and that is it. Purge mode. Victorious once again. As Burke has blood streaming down his face. The winner of the match, Adam Shaw. I wouldn't call it so much of a blood sacrifice for the blood goddess, but a blood offering to the blood goddess, courtesy of Adam Shaw. And this fucking lunatic is running loose on retaliation once again and just made quick work of the leader of Hydra. Hydra. Thunder. Hell, the rest of retaliation needs to be careful. Hell, the DSM-5 needs to be careful. I don't even know if they can keep this thing under control. This lunatic might just absolutely go apeshit on this brand. Oh, luckily he's down there and I'm up here. Big win for him nonetheless. And we're going to move on to our main event of the evening. We thank you for coming out and watching here tonight. As we continue on the road to Inferno. Longer month than usual here. Five shows. Had the shakeup, but looks like the rosters have mostly been stabilized. I believe after tonight's show, we will have some sort of a uh, full list on Discord for you all. But main event of the evening, three women very tightly and woven in the championship race. The champion and her challenger and Miss Golden Ticket taken on the reunited three ladies of the Rogers Foundation. It is tonight's main event and it's coming up next. Ladies and gentlemen, this next contest is a women's six-person tag contest. From Atlanta, Georgia, she is the leader of DSM-5, Apathy! The champ is here in Apathy, causing quite the stir on social media over the past week, but in a good way. Last week's show, she cut a very heartfelt and deep promo talking about her rise back to the top and all the setbacks she had to face but most importantly on top of that she convinced her friend Azami Sato 
who did not want to use her rematch clause against Apathy. Azami said the best woman won, be it as it may. But Apathy able to convince Azami to use that rematch clause at Inferno. And the two shook hands in the center of the ring. And we will get the run back from a very good match from Beach Brawl, but this time in Apathy's backyard of Atlanta. But tonight they are partners and the Panda Posse will have a couple of very good members on her side. From Akihabara, Japan, the Kawaii Princess, Azami K. Sato. And the Kawaii Princess, the leader of the Panda Posse. She had a very good run as women's champion, but all things must come to an end. And I'm sure if you talk to her, she may be disappointed it came to an end, but she's also probably very happy. One of her close friends was the one able to benefit from it but we will get round two in inferno and beast for a very close contest a match that apathy had the upper hand for proceeding asami had the upper hand for most of the match and ultimately won by apathy in the very end just catching asami off guard with the death of Fortress dishonor ddt and now Zami, she didn't want it, but she's gonna get her second chance to reclaim the title. And again, we will see who the better woman is between the two friends, but their prize for winning that match might very well be this woman right here, Miss Golden Ticket Torby. From the Nordic States, she is the RWR Women's Golden Ticket Holder, the Shield Maiden, Torvi. She's made her way up the division, but with the shakeup happening and seeing plenty of new faces on the brand, Torvi deciding that it might be a good time to use her case sooner rather than later, especially if she wants to head into Supernova in the championship match. I mean, I believe she would have got there on her own regardless, but that case certainly will do the job for her just as easily. And she made her intentions known. One, she wanted Hope Rogers at Inferno as payback from Pope being the first woman to beat her in a match this season. Speaking of, here she is. On her way to the ring, the Mermaid Princess of the Rogers Foundation, Hope Rogers. Hope making her way to the ring. It's hard to believe this little lady was able to pin Torvi, but she did it. And it's been eating away at Torvi ever since. I believe it happened all the way back at a... Uh, Sky's the Limit, I believe, before Sky's the Limit. They were these, it was a preview match for the four retaliation women in the match. And Torvi was the one that ended up with the briefcase, but that loss to Hope has really been eating at her ever since. Coming down the aisle, from the ghost pirate ship of the Rogers Foundation, Faith. Rogers and Torvi, she was able to put away Isogen, but she's been waiting to get her hands on Hope. And she said, after she's done with Hope, the champion needs to watch out because she may be cashing in sooner rather than later. But here comes Mama Rogers, Faith Rogers, and she stood by her daughter's side for the beach brawl match with Olivia Taylor. Not in a very successful effort, but still in her daughter's corner nonetheless. But now the foundation, at least the women's side, is together once again. And Auntie Lily made her retaliation debut two weeks ago after Torby called out Hope, but was ultimately answered by Lily defending her family member. But Torvi ended up making quick work of Lily. But the family sticking together here tonight in this tag team match against 
A very unlikely tag team. I mean, the champion and challenger, good friends, but they have that wild card with Torvi. And we'll see who stands tall here tonight. And here comes the third member of the foundation, Lily Thatcher. Presenting the Rogers Foundation, Lily Thatcher! And Lily seemingly getting kind of lost in the shuffle on Resurgence. Trying to just pick some fights with people, but finding some direction here in retaliation, if anything. Just finding a place with her family here at the Rogers Foundation, back together, and seemingly just trying to help help her sister help her her niece if I'm, if I believe that's right correct me if I'm wrong and you know she may have been unsuccessful against Torby two weeks ago but it was just her stepping up to the plate in general just proving just how she really is and now here she is again you know blood's thicker than water and it may not be exactly where she wants to be, but you know damn well she wants to help defend her family. And she's gonna have the second opportunity to do that here tonight. And here we go. Main event of the evening, six woman tag team action, retaliation rules. This one's gonna get crazy. And it's already getting pretty crazy. Looks like our early pairings, Torvi and Faith. Apathy and Hope, Azami and Lily. Not quite the pairings I would have expected, but that's the ones we're getting. Big clothesline from Torvi. On to Faith. Apathy taking it to Hope. They had... Apathy and Hope, very interesting story. They had a uh, budding friendship of their own earlier this season. Very much on good terms, but... Apathy ultimately taking advantage of Hope's uh, situation to pick a poison. Of course, Hope chucked into the side of Helena Cell, bouncing off the apron, courtesy of Olivia Taylor, which led to the match at Beach Brawl. And kind of ever since then, I think that alliance or somewhat of a friendship, uh, I wouldn't say friendship, maybe just um, acquaintanceship. There you go just kind of faltered from there and certainly no love loss in this one as a zombie thrown out of the ring and so is Torvi leaving Apathy the women's champion alone well briefly with the Rogers Foundation but crucifix pin on Pope only a one count Lily able to break it up now outside Torvi and Faith going at it Meanwhile, in the ring, Apathy, the cover on Lily, and only one count Hope able to break it up, saving the match for Auntie Lily. And the two friends, the zombie and Apathy, going after Hope and Lily here in this one. And Lily outside the ring, it's Hope trying to fend it alone against champion and challenger here. Apathy, oh, grabbing Hope by the hair and just wrenches her down. Apathy, the champ, taking it to Hope here. The zombie getting back to her feet. Lily not far behind. But Apathy catches her with a scoop and a slam and an elbow drop. Apathy trying to squeeze the life out of Hope's head with her very strong legs and thighs. Big boo connecting, nearly kicking Hope's head into the fourth row. And Tori just taking it to faith on the outside. Rogers Foundation in trouble here. But, oh, backstabber out of nowhere from Hope connecting on Apathy. Lily, nice backbreaker there. 
on Azami. And oh, the flip pile driver connects on the champion, Hope Rogers. Pinning the champion would be huge for her quest for the title again, but broken up by Azami K. Sato. And now Hope takes Azami out of the equation, leaving her in apathy inside of the ring. German suplex, no apathy, able to flip out of it and kicks Hope to the ground. And now apathy, oh, just wrenching on the leg of Hope Rogers. Nice figure four there, but Hope able to fight out of it. And, oh, big German suplex connecting. Torby, oh, shield made it connecting on Faith. Looking for the cover and Lily able to immediately break it up. After taking down a zombie, Hope still going after the champion here. Eats a forearm shot, but Hope body splash there, just wailing away on apathy. As Hope trying to size up a zombie. Rogers Foundation, nice backbreaker there. Have a zombie alone in the ring. Torvi Apathy on the outside, the cover from Hope. One, two, and three. Rogers Foundation, your winners here tonight. Winners of the match, the team of Hope Rogers, Faith Rogers, and Lily Thatcher. It looks like blood may just be thicker than water. The Rogers Foundation, a very decisive win over the women's champion, her best friend challenger, and Miss Golden Ticket Torvi here tonight in our main events of Retaliation number 63. We thank you for watching tonight's show. I am commentator Uno, and we will see you next week as we continue on the road to Inferno two weeks away.